Good morning. I woke myself up. Whew. Welcome to this time of worship and sharing. Uh, for those of you that may not know me, my name is Bob Zirko, and I'll be your lay leader this morning. Please take time to complete the communications and, and prayer request form in your bulletin. They will be collected during service, and all prayers will be lifted up today and remembered throughout the week. Join us for refreshments and special treats today after worship in the East Room. You're welcome to make use of our family worship room right outside the sanctuary um, in the West Wing. The service is broadcast there. Wow, what a long weekend. Thanksgiving, Christmas shop, and the crash lighting last night. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that helped this weekend with everything, whether you helped set up, tear down, bake cookies, um, push one or two chairs, Drew, I won't mention any names, um, whatever you might have done, uh, but uh, a special thanks to Jan for putting together another fantastic year of the crash. It was my eighth or ninth crash, and I think this was uh, the most crowded. There had to be 350 people here, uh, because just about all the programs were gone, and of course that doesn't include the smaller children. So um, thank you everybody who helped. Um, Carol's not here, she must be worn out from last night. Carol did a great job ushering and moving people and trying to get them to sit down. Um, so we wanted to thank her for that. Great, and thank you for all your hard work with that. I know the ladies were here from like seven in the morning and stuck around for the crash, so we thank you for that. Uh, if you notice in your bulletin, um, I think this is correct. The Harvest Home Collection total uh, is listed there, just over $15,000. Thank you for that. Uh, on the front of our bulletin, if you're interested in purchasing a poinsettia in someone's name, uh, we would like the uh, orders and the money collected by the 7th. Um, I, whoever does the bulletin put the wrong date in there. Um, it's by the 7th, not the 14th, to talk to them. Remind me to. Uh, this t uh, Tuesday, December 2nd, is family prayer time at 6.30. Um, and, of course, on Christmas Eve, our service is at 8 p.m. And um, we decided to throw that in there, our next youth service um, and quarterly meeting, annual meeting, sorry, uh, is Sunday January 11th, followed by Super Sunday. Super Sunday. Peak. Wait, Super Sunday. Cream of mushroom soup. Super Sunday. Uh, do we have any other announcements today? Okay, seeing none, we'll continue with our. Yes? Oh my gosh, this just in. This just in. This just in. A, a Plymouth Christmas party is going to be Sunday, December 14th, from 4 to 7 p.m. at Pastor Bill and Stella's um, house. Yes. I checked with the boss, and she said... December 14th from 4 to 7. There is a sign-up sheet in the binder back there. Um, please sign up. No, you cannot get rid of the binder. Stop it. Uh, right, we, we uh, sign up. We'd like to know how many people are coming so Pastor Bill has enough time to put the addition onto the house. And then uh, if you could kindly bring a, a quick type of dessert holiday thing, and then it's followed by the white elephant which is always a lot of fun, so. 
I have that saved on my computer. December 14th from 4 to 7. Now we'll continue with call to worship and then our Advent reading. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, a time where we prepare for the coming of our Savior. Let us open our hearts to his coming and let us never forget that his birth as one of us would be the salvation for all of us. Sunday of Advent, we get to light the first candle on our Advent wreath. The first candle is known as the prophecy candle, or the candle of hope. Today, we have two scripture readings to support both meanings. Our first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 and 2. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As the twigs set the fire ablaze and cause water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations quake before you. Our second reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 15, verses 12 and 13. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, and one who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. May, they, may the God of hope fill you with, jo- with all the joy and peace in believing. So that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. We'll now continue with our praise hymn, the King of Glory, number 134, verses 1 and 3. Good morning. Before we get into prayer here, we're going to look at a quick scripture story here. And uh, it is in Mark chapter 7, and it's going to start on verse 24. And it says, He got up, he being Jesus, and departed from there to the region of Tyre and Sidon. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it. But he could not escape notice, and instead, immediately after hearing about him, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit came and fell at his feet. Now the woman was a Greek, a um, Seraphonician by birth, and she kept asking him to drive the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Allow the children to be satisfied first, because it isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she replied to him, Lord, even the crumbs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Even the dogs on the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, because of this reply, you may go. The demon has gone out of your daughter. When she went back to her home, she found her child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Um, This is a pretty cool story for the obvious reason that Jesus cast out a demon, but also these three other little facts that kind of just show how Jesus was 
pretty countercultural at the time. For one, he was in Tyre, which is a place that Jewish people do not go. Um, there's a real divide between those two, the Jews and everybody else, the Gentile nations. Um, the wrong gender, for one, women were in the Jewish culture not seen as somebody you can just kind of come up to a, a rabbi and just, hey, let me talk to you. And um, again, three, uh, she was a Gentile. She wasn't a Jew, so it's, again, that kind of weirdness. Uh, and four, she's the wrong kind of person to have the blessing. They, Jesus blessed her. And in some of your, your versions, it'll say um, a little bit more kind of uncomfortable that Jesus is referring to the woman as a dog. But it's a way of showing that first comes Israel's blessing and then everybody else. But since this lady had the, her great faith that she's going to get that same blessing because she was grafted in. She was a, uh, a Hellenized type person. She was a non-Jew, but she still got grafted into the same blessing, which is the same blessing that Jesus offered for all of us. Even though we're not of the same lineage, we're still grafted in to receive that blessing that Israel gets. So with that, let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for for coming to us and, and blessing us and letting us participate in, in eternal life. And Lord, as we go throughout this service, help us to praise you and help us to um, just worship with everything we got. We pray in Christ's name, amen. And let's do that by singing our next hymn which is the king of glory comes 134 verses 1 3 nope that's already we already did that don't do that O come O come Emmanuel 133 which is verses uh, 1 3 and 5 please stand You may be seated. Here comes that time to take the little insert in your bulletins and write your prayer requests down. Friends going to come along and collect them, and they'll be sent out so more people can pray about them. And while he does that, we're going to sing. We're going to sing 
We worship and adore you, number 33. bow and go to prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, this morning. Thank you for the nice warm church we're allowed to come in and worship you in. And Lord, we're thankful that you let us take all our concerns and needs to you and that you'll meet them according to your will. And that's what we ask, Lord, that your will be done and not ours. And Lord, through all the financial difficulties and, and family problems and everything else like that, we would just ask that you would bring about good outcomes that benefit us and, and ultimately benefit your kingdom. And as we go through the holiday seasons, Lord, help us to, uh, us to remind ourselves that we're here because we're celebrating you and your birth and your event eventual triumph over sin. And Lord, thank you for doing all this for us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.
students walk. I said, you're the prettiest little girl I know in our church. And guess who was standing next to me? You have to understand the, the circumstances. <laughs> oh, Lindsay was standing next to me, my granddaughter. <clears throat> I were to ask you, the gentleman sitting in the very back row, where he's sitting with a lady, just two people in the back row on this side, would you know his name? Did, did I hear somebody say idiot? Oh. I thought somebody hollered out his name. Do, do you know, <clears throat> let's see, do you know that lady's name right there? What's her name? Miss Elizabeth. Wow. Uh, do you know that gentleman sitting back there in a the purple shirt? Do you know what his name is? Okay. <clears throat> if Jesus were to come into our service today, did you recognize him? No? What, what do you think he'd be dressed like today? In a robe. Okay. Anybody else? No? How about uh, hmm? jeans and a t-shirt? It's comfortable, but it might be a little chilly outside, so maybe a jacket. My point of all this is, is, first of all, God wants us to have a relationship with him so that we know who he is. And in the only way we can know someone, how do you get to know people? Do what? Talking to them. Do what? Eat them? Oh, I was going to say, why would you say eat them? Your brother, you, you know what we went through yesterday. But no, Drew didn't eat your brother. <clears throat> you slobbered all over him again? And you thought Drew was trying to ingest him. <laughs> he didn't. <clears throat> the way we get to know people is talk to them and spend time with them, right? I know. And that's how I know you loved your brother because when you finally saw him, you hugged him. Really good. Your other sister? <laughs> no, we, we talk to people. We learn to. We, we're around them. We, we learn who and what they are. How do you do that with somebody that you can't see? You're, the, you're honest. Thank you. Hide under your bed? No, there are no monsters under your bed. <clears throat> I can prove it. see them dust bunnies when you put a great big light on a little bitty thing it looks great big but the way we the way we learn who Jesus is to recognize him I want you to listen to this verse that I wrote in here be on guard be alert you do not know what time he will come back so if we're expecting someone to come to the house or to our church or to the earth don't we have to be ready for them? Do you have to stay in service? Do you want to stay in service? Well, then I think I'll let you go when I'm done, okay? As long as you listen real good. 
So when we expect someone, it's like Mr. Zerko gave the announcement that we're having some kind of a thing at my house, you know? <laughs> And so what we, Stella and I, will be ready at the time when everybody's supposed to be there and we'll expect you to come. But what happens if, if you decide to come an hour late? You'll miss all the fun. You'll miss having a good time with me eating all kinds of good stuff. And Miss Arlene's going to bring deviled eggs. And Bob's going to bring deviled eggs. And we're going to have a whole bunch of deviled eggs. Because guess who likes deviled eggs? <laughs> Me too. But you see, that's how we know people. We get to know what they like and what they dislike and the things that they do. So I want you to learn how to recognize Jesus by reading about him in his word. You don't like grapefruit? Well, then how do you know if you don't like it? See, I used to be that way with broccoli. I don't well, I never did. But then when I changed the way I eat, I, <laughs> it was the only thing left to eat. So guess what? I like broccoli now. I like broccoli any way I can fix it. Except raw. Raw. Yuck. But you see, knowing someone is knowing what they like and don't like. And Jesus likes it. Be ready, because we don't know what hour he'll come. Okay? Can you do that? Can you remember that? What did I say? <laughs> Be ready. Okay, you guys can go. Would the ushers come forward, please, and we'll receive our morning offering. <coughs> God, multiplying not only in kind, 
but in health, in, in attitude, in, in outlook. God, that today you would touch us with your blessing. And that, Lord, as we go through this season of Advent, God, we may just be filled to overflowing with all the blessings ask you now to bless our gift, for we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, David. Please be seated. set back up again. We, we finished the service about 10 minutes after 8. By the time I got back in here, tables were tore down, chairs were stacked up. It took us less than an hour to put this whole place back together after the whole service was over with. And I thank those of you who helped. I thank you immensely. Uh, as tired and as, as weary as that week makes you, what we saw last night, uh, I'm not talking about the crowd. I'm talking about what, what our people did, and I thank you for that. I'm, I'm so grateful. And all of you that helped set it up, it was just amazing. Uh, the ladies worked hard. We had uh, the Christmas shop. Uh, and by the end of that day, I'm getting a little... <clears throat> Testy's the word, yeah. <clears throat> but it, it, it was a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, and, and like Bob said, and some others said, it was... <laughs> I just made another one mad. Yeah, I, I, I indiscriminately pick on anybody. I did. Arlene was taking a little bit of a, a rest, and she's been feeling really bad. She's been watching our prayer, prayer requests. And uh, she was sitting in the Family Worship Center, which better known as a nursery, and her eyes were closed. And so I took a picture of her, and she said, I'm not sleeping. Just resting her eyes. Beth, I just love you to pieces. Thank you very much. <clears throat> what was in there? <laughs> so thank you all who helped. <clears throat> wonderful, incredible day. And we raised over $500 for the emergency fund for the PMA and over $700 for our youth. And all the vendors made all kinds of wonderful money, thank God. And we just had a great day. And of course, I made all of Plainfield mad because I s took two parking places out here for drop-off. I'll hear about that tomorrow. Ask me if I can. 
Today, I want to talk to you about Advent. <clears throat> Today, I want to talk to you about anticipation. How many of you get excited about the, the four weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas? Our oldest daughter's name is Kelly. And she's 45, six years, 79. She was born in 79, whatever that is to today. 69, yeah. Yeah, I was born in, in 59. No, they wouldn't let me in the room. You understand why. But anyway, she is a little kid. She's 45, 46 years old. She's a little kid when it comes to Christmas time. She's been playing Christmas music since her birthday, August 13th. I do remember that. She gets excited about this time of year. And I know why. It has nothing to do with present. It has to do with the fact that she gets to act like a little kid. And she told me one day, she says, Daddy, I'm going to grow up 10 years after you do. So she never has to worry about that. Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 12, if you'd like to follow along with me. It says, longing for the Lord to come. Oh, that you would rend the heavens that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence. As fire burns the brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence when you did awesome things for which we did not look. You came down. The world Men have not even heard from the beginning of the world, but men have not even heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye ever seen anything like you. <clears throat> who acts for the one who waits for him? You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, who remembers you in your way. You are indeed angry, for we have sinned. In these ways, we, we, we continue, and we need to be saved. You see, that term today in our churches offends people. Did you know that? If I were to ask you today, how many, don't raise your hands, don't say anything, but if I were to say how many of you are saved, some of you look at me and say, say from what? Well, let me tell you what I'm saved from. I'm saved from a life of sin. I'm saved from eternal damnation and punishment. Separation from God because of my sins. And the only reason I can make the claim that I am a Christian is because of the blood that Jesus Christ shed for me on the cross. You say, preacher... You got this out of whack. You're Easter time. We're, we're in Advent season. My hope is fixed in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Can I tell you something? Without the blood of Jesus, all of this is nothing but glamour, glitz, and pretty little tinkling, twinky lights. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we have. Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. I'm just going to read verse 35, though. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or the midnight, or at the cock crow, or at dawn. Did you all have a good Thanksgiving? Did you eat more than you should have? Did you have fun with family and friends? Did you have a good fellowship time, a time when you could just kick back and be yourself? That describes me all the time, because I am who I am. I was taught by to say, oh no, I got off on the wrong song again. But I want, you, I want you to think about something here with me. 
How many of you have your outside Christmas lights up already? Come on, be honest with me. Do you? You put your outside Christmas lights up already. Couldn't wait. Couldn't wait till after today. Oh, the weather outside is good enough to put up the lights, and we're going to be excited about lighting up our house. Thanksgiving Day, my wife and daughters decorated our mantle. And Stella said to me, go down and get the mantle stuff, will you? What's mantle stuff? I don't know what mantle. You know, the stuff that fit. I didn't know what she wanted. I had no clue, so I brought it all upstairs. Proceeded to make her mad at me. Then I have to take it all back downstairs and I got mad at her. I did. But I want you to, we, we get excited. Last Sunday, guess what we did here in the church? Can you guess? And we couldn't wait to get it done. Now it's done, now we're waiting to take it down. I look ahead. I don't know about you, but I look at it. But we get so excited about lights and tinsels and sales and Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Pookie Dookie Wednesday and all those other kind of silly things. How many of us are really excited about Jesus Christ? You see, Thanksgiving's a wonderful time to give thanks. Thanksgiving's what we ought to do, and you heard my sermon last week, we ought to do it every day. We worry about staging the Christmas tree, making sure it's in the right place and it's turned just the right way and the lights tinkle just the right way and we've got all the pretty ornaments on. We've got a lot of old ornaments at our house. Older than me. Well, maybe not. Mom made them out of medicine bottles. Remember them little old, tiny medicine bottles like that? They had a snap-off cap, and even a dumb, dumb guy like me could get in them. Well, she made ornaments, and we got those on the tree. And I hide a pickle every year. I hid the pickle last year. My grandkids still haven't found it. Not in our house. See, in our house, I get to hide it wherever I want. And they can't find it yet. I bet you can come, couldn't find it. Come to, the, come to the, 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 the holiday party. See if you can find it. Huh? I, I, I've got people in high places, brother. Higher than your chief. <laughs> Children get excited. You take them to the store. Oh, buy me that. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. I remember our kids. No, Christmas is coming. They couldn't wait till Christmas morning. Is December 25th the birthday of Christ? Is that the right day that we celebrate? Why do we celebrate Christmas in December? You got any idea? What would you think? Nope. Had nothing to do with the government. Had to do with the church fathers. The church fathers decided that Christmas, the, the celebration of the birth of Christ, the birth, not the death, burial, and resurrection, the birth of Christ would be in the winter time because the winter time is a time that's bleak and dark. How many of you have been through bleak and dark times in your life? How many of you are in them now? Well, let me tell you something. It's so cool to see. What time does it get dark now? The lights come on out here on just before it gets dark. All the tinklies are pretty, and it just makes you think about the resurrection. It makes you think about new life. 
life anew. That's what Jesus came to bring to us. We anticipate his birth. And you know what we do with him for the next three months? We look at little baby Jesus in the nursery, in, in the manger. Thing. I want to tell you something, folks. When you celebrate my birthday in March, I'd like for you to worship me like you do the little baby doll, little baby Billy. What a nice kid. Oh, you know. Let me ask you something. When you celebrate your birthday, do they dress you up in a diaper and put you in a manger? I didn't think so. But it's still not easy this time of year. You know that? My dad hated this time of year. My dad hated it because his mom his dad, his grandma and grandpa, two uncles and an aunt, all died between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And when Thanksgiving hit, the minute we got out of the field from hunting on Thanksgiving Day, we always hunted on Thanksgiving Day. The minute we came out of the field after we had lunch with grandma and grandpa, my dad started on that slickly, slicky slide, slicky slope of of emotional going downhill. And not until January did he ever come back up. It's hard for some people. It's difficult. What's difficult? It's difficult to look beyond our circumstances. You see, Christmas for kids is exciting. And I think that may have been the only thing that kept my dad alive when, when me and my brother were little. The constant thing of the darkest time in your life. This is, this is one of the reasons that the church fathers chose this time of year. It's right around the winter solstice. You know what that means? That means the longest period of dark. In it, some light comes. Remember the story of the wise men? How did they get to Jesus? They followed the star. How did the shepherds get to where Jesus was? The angels told them how to get there. In the darkest of dark times in their lives, they had some light. That's what I want you to see today. I want you to see that there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's light after death. For us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, do you understand that, that death is just like that little division there? And you go like this and you say, hi, Lord, how are you doing? And he says, fine, come on. We don't like to talk about that. But do you know that's the reason that we have Christmas in the wintertime near the solstice, near that longest day of the year? Because light has come into the world. What did Jesus say? John, John said, men love darkness rather than light. What do you think the, the budget is just for the Christmas tree lights for the White House? Or the governor's mansion or your house even, I don't know. Unless your name's uh, Griswold. That's him? Then I won't have a hard time finding your house this week. But it doesn't matter what the budget is. It matters what the lights represent. They represent the light of goodness of God, of Jesus. Because that's why he, we celebrate it now. He could have been born July 4th. Who cares? You know what the most important... You know, I was at a, at a store the other day, and, and I'm one of these real sticklers for Merry Christmas. And this lady said to me, have a happy holiday. And she saw I had my rock solid shirt on, and she says, and please don't tell me Merry Christmas, because if I have to say that out loud, I can get fired. How would you like to work in a situation like that? Or if you say Merry Christmas to somebody, you might offend that, that person over here that doesn't believe. Do you know what? 
that's okay. Let me tell you something, dudes. That person's going to get offended one day when they walk up to the pearly gates and say, hey, I don't believe in you, but I want to come in. Not by the hair of your chinny, chin, chin. Do you know there's only one entrance fee? Mark Lowry and Buddy Green wrote a song that just, every time I hear it, even think about it, I tear up. Mary, did you know that the child you delivered will one day deliver you? Oh, I know they didn't write it back when she was able to hear it. But remember what it said about Mary? It said that she kept of those things and pondered them in her heart. I watch Beth with her children, and I remember when my children were her children's age, and I see the great smile come on their face and the tears when they do anything, even stupid. I watch all of you that got little kids. Well, some of them aren't so little anymore. Do you know the great thing about that is? It's what God gave us to perpetuate, to continue. That's why I take time with our children in our service. That's why in my mind, Sunday school is important here. Whether we've only got five or six kids in it, it's important. Because if we don't train them now, the government will train them later. They're trying hard today already in schools. You see, in the book of Mark, it says, well, let me, let me go here. Times human beings feel their greatest longing for God is when it's darkest. When you're sitting in a doctor's office and you expect him to give you bad news. And he comes in and he says to you, it ain't broke. Hi, John. You know, can I tell you something off the record here? Just between us, nobody's listening. This man worked by himself just to make sure that we had sound outside and fell twice. Fell twice. I really thought you broke your arm. I prayed like you wouldn't believe for you. And I get this, I should have had my phone here. I ought to broadcast up on screen. Bob sent this, and John's got his arm in the cat or wrapped up for him. The funniest looking picture I ever saw in my life. Because when I saw it, I could only see this much of it. I didn't see the rest of it. Just his hand. Selflessly, he brought his own equipment over and took it out. Set it up to make sure we had sound outside. That's what being a Christian does. I'm not asking you to bring your stuff here. I'm just asking you to, to remember when what Christ did for us and what he made us. He made us here. Hello. Everyone in this room is part of my family. family. And so when I said yesterday to Piper that she's one of the prettiest little girls I've ever seen and my granddaughter was standing next to me I got kicked <laughs> by her mother twice huh oh I know but I think all three of my girls are beautiful I think my whole family could have kissed you all last night when we came back in from outside and half of this was already done. That's what makes families family. You 
See, human beings feel their lowest and their, their worst when it's darkest in their lives. Yet these times when we feel so low, God gives us his spirit. When things are going well for us, do you talk to God a lot when things are going real good for you? Or do you wait until they get I hope your prayer life is good all the time. But you see, Isaiah wrote these words that he wrote at a time when it was darkest in Israel. What did he write, preacher? What did he write? He wrote this. There is no one who calls upon your name, no one who stirs himself up to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have consumed us because of our iniquities. But, listen, but now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said this, a father, you being good, wouldn't give to your son a serpent if he asked you for a sandwich, would you? In other words, if, if your son came to you and said, Dad, I'm hungry, would you give me, give me a sandwich? You wouldn't give him a rock, would you? Well, Tom, you see, you understand, God, Jesus uses things to teach us things. And he uses simple things. Listen to what he goes on and says. Do not be furious, O Lord, nor remember iniquity forever. Indeed, please look. We are your people. Who are God? How do we get to be a God people? Well, you have to be born Jewish, then you're one of the chosen. <clears throat> I know a lot of churches that are the chosen and frozen today. But my friends, I want to tell you something. You don't get there because God chose you. You get there because you choose to follow Jesus Christ. Any other way ain't the way. He goes on and he says, Your holy cities are a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem is a desolation. Our holy and beautiful temple where our fathers praised you is burned up with fire and all your pleasant things are laid waste. Will you restrain yourself because of these, O Lord? Will you hold your peace and afflict us severely? And the answer is I'm going to send you I'm going to send you a savior. I'm going to have this little girl, this virgin, this damsel who's already engaged. Wait a minute. This is Isaiah, right? What are you talking about? He already prophesied it. And we go, oh. You see, he prophesied that that would happen. And then you know what he did? He proceeded to make it happen. As you listen to the, to the Advent readings each week, you'll hear the story unfold. We already know the story, don't we? We know the Christmas story better than any other story, maybe except for the resurrection story. But I want you to understand that we celebrate it at the darkest time. It was the darkest in history for Isaiah. It's the darkest in the, the time schedule that we live in. And for some of us, it's been a pretty dark winter already. But can I tell you what? The light's coming. The light's coming. The understanding will be. Pray tell when we turn the light on. Where does the darkness go? Darkness and light cannot cohabitate. You say, oh, that's the dust, that's the dawn. No. 
as the sun comes up, the darkness comes. I thought it was so cute when, when uh, uh, Ava said to me, there's monsters under my bed. Was it Ava? There's monsters under my bed. Have you ever taken a dust bunny and shined a light on it up on the wall? Gets to be a dust rabbit then. Have you ever looked under your bed at night? <laughs> I subscribe to a lot of crazy things, but one of the things I subscribe to is, is this newsletter. And here's what it said. It said, do you, when you get ready to take a shower, you're standing there ready to get in, water's running, and you take the shower curtain down <laughs> to see if anybody's in there? What would you do if there was? I know what I'd do. I don't sprinkle, I don't. <laughs> Baptize them for a good long time. Therefore, keep away, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, whether it's in the evening or the midnight, or at the cock crow or at dawn. Mark 13, 35. Are we ready for the birth of Christ? Are we ready? Are we waiting for it? This is a time when you can get your spirits, wake up your spirits in preparation for the birth. That's why I truly love Christmas time. I hate all the stuff that goes along with it. I'm going to tell you what. Yesterday, if you'd have given me a plug nickel, I'd have, I'd have turned all this over to you. But in the end, see the meeting house filled with people. I mean, filled with people. There was no place else to put anybody. Joyce sent me in the back and they're coming in and going out. And coming. It looked like a, a ebb and flow of a tide. Oh, we thought you were going to start outside at 7 o'clock. No, we start inside at 7 o'clock. Read the paper. After a while, we just got to the point, open the door, hand them a bulletin, they come in and walk back out. But there were, I mean, we couldn't have put another person in here at one point. It's a time when we can wake up our spirits in preparation for the birth of Christ. Whereas the gospel says, we do not know what time he'll come. When the master of the house comes, our Lord Jesus, will you be ready? TV commercial time. Anticipation. Remember that TV commercial? Poor people. Anticipating the relief of pain. Anticipating the relief of your acid reflux or whatever that commercial was all about. I thought it was tongues. Wasn't it? Hmm? Oh, yeah. I don't even catch it. Anticipate. The birth of Christ. The renewal of the birth of Christ in your life. Anticipate what it means to have the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Master, the Creator of all the universe, loving you so much that He said, down and show you how to do it. The guy that I subscribe a lot to his stuff is John Maxwell. And John has a way of doing things and he says, I go and you go with me. You watch me do. Then I go with you and you do. And then I let you go and you do by on your own. That's the way it's done. Isn't that the way Jesus did it? It's good enough for Jesus and good enough for us. Let's pray to that. Heavenly Father, I want to really today be in such excited anticipation about the birth of Christ. Lord, I just I, I want to be I want to be like a little kid, so excited 
that we're celebrating the birthday of the most famous, most incredible, most wonderful, most loving person in all creation. And we not only get to be at his party, but we get the best gift of all. The birth of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, I know you're not a baby anymore. And I know you're not laying in that manger out in front. I know where you live. You live in my heart. Bless us now, Father, as we stand together and sing our closing hymn. In Jesus' name I pray. that you would just stir up all the juices of joy and excitement in this season. God, you would send us forth as light into a dark world. Jesus, you told us we're the light of the world. Help us today, God, to stay in a, in a mode of anticipation, not just for old ketchup either. We pray this in Christ's name.